Hello, my name is Greg Krinklaw, and I'm the developer of SkyTools. In this video, we are going to set up an observing location for SkyTools 4. An observing location in SkyTools is more than just a latitude and longitude. It also specifies the light pollution at the location, the weather conditions, and possibly an obstructed horizon, say some trees blocking your view. I've brought up SkyTools 4 Visual. Locations work exactly the same way in SkyTools 4 Imaging. In fact, if you have the bundle, they're shared between the two. So how do we get to our locations? We could go to the Setup menu and select Locations, or we could find a location and click the gear icon. In order to create a new location, we click the New button. Now I can go and go through these menus and select a location, say Boulder, Colorado, and click OK, and that will enter the latitude and longitude for Boulder as a way to get started. But I'm going to go ahead and create a manual location instead to show you how to do that. So now we brought up the Create New Location dialog, and I'm going to enter a longitude, 105, 33, 16, and a latitude, 32, 17, 12. Now what I've done is I've entered the longitude in degrees, minutes, and seconds, and the latitude in degrees, minutes, and seconds. Now I could have put in colons instead of spaces like this. I could also have used decimals, so 33.25, or even 105.5674, something like that. And you can do that for both of these. Notice both of these numbers are supposed to be positive. They're neg never negative. If you are in the Southern Hemisphere, then you set S here instead of entering a negative latitude. For longitudes, most longitudes are given with either an East or a West. Sometimes they're just given as a number, positive or negative. If it's positive, it's going to be an East longitude. And if it's negative, it will be a West longitude. So for instance, if you're given a longitude of minus 105.5674, then that is a west longitude and make sure to enter it as a positive number. West longitudes are in the Americas, east longitudes are in Europe. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to enter the longitude and latitude from Google Earth. I'm going to show you how to do that. Now this is a spot on the side of the road that I set up a camera to take a picture. So I'm just going to zoom into the spot, which is right about there in the center. I'm going to go up to Edit and select Copy View Location. Then we go back to Sky Tools and click Paste Lat Long. And it's pasted them in there. Notice there's no elevation or altitude, so I'm going to go back to Google Earth. And notice down here on the right, the elevation is 3,560 feet. Back at Sky Tools, I will just type that in, 3560, make sure and set that at feet, and then click OK. Well, first let's enter a name for the location. Side of Road. Okay, now click OK. Now we've created our location called Side of Road. We can edit that location by clicking the Edit button, which brings this back up. So the next thing we can do is enter the time zone. And in North America, there are the standard time zones here. Outside of North America, you just put the GMT plus or minus a number, say minus 12. I'm going to go with Mountain Standard Time in the North America. Next thing to do is set up Daylight Saving Time or Summer Time. And I can click the Configure button here, or I can click Daylight Saving Rules, and it will bring up the Configure dialog for that. There are presets for use in Canada, EU, and Australia that preset these numbers. If you live elsewhere and they're different, you can put in the first day of the year that daylight saving time starts, and the last day, and the time of the night. We're going to go with US Canada, since that's where this is, and click OK. Next, we're going to set up the amount of light pollution for our location. I'm going to click here, 
There are two ways to do this. You may have one or other tab only depending on which version of the software you're running. The basic version, you set the magnitude of the faintest star that you can see overhead. Or you can just enter a general location. In this case, it would say 7.1, so I could just type that in there. Or we can adopt what our light pollution database says, and it's recommending 7.29. To do that, I would click Use. But most people will use the Advanced tab here. There you can set your Bortle scale, if you know that from, for your location. You can enter the sky brightness in magnitudes per arc second squared. Or if you have it in magnitudes per arc minute squared, you click this and you can enter the number there. Or you can use our Light Pollution Database. I just clicked Use to enter this number. Now, a note of caution about that, if I had selected Boulder as my location, and but I actually lived outside of Boulder, this is going to select the light pollution for downtown Boulder. So you probably want to use your exact location if you use the light pollution database. Next thing we want to do is set the weather. Now there are current conditions here which are overridden inside the program, but these numbers will give you a default. You can set it to Fahrenheit. In this case, it's, it's uh, 50 degrees, type in a number, or C, you can put in the percentage of humidity, your relative humidity, and the typical seeing, or the seeing that you're seeing for that particular night, since these are the current conditions. But for long-term planning, we can set what things are usually like on a typical night that you actually observe, nighttime, that you actually observe during each month of the year. This is used for long-term planning. So in January at this location, you can get down to be pretty cold, 35 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees relative humidity, and then I can move on to February. It's going to be a little bit warmer. 30 degrees relative humidity and so forth. So you can set that throughout the year. You can get these numbers from a climatology database or from your notes or from experience. This value down here isn't set on a monthly basis. It's just the typical scene for your, your location on a night when you actually observe. And I'm gonna go with good for this location and click okay. Another thing we can do is set up our obstructed horizon if we want to. I'll click the Create button here to create a new obstructed horizon. Now there's multiple ways to do this. You can draw the horizon in on an overhead sky chart. The instructions to do that are here. You can enter altitude and azimuth pairs around the horizon in a file and read those in. You can connect your telescope and move it around the horizon and take a reading as you move it. The instructions for doing that are here in the help. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read some numbers from a file. I've got a preset file here. And I'm just going to do the simplest thing possible. I'm going to start with an azimuth of 0 and an altitude of 30 degrees. And then I'm going to end with an, with an azimuth of 360 and an altitude of 30 degrees. Normally, you'd put in a lot more numbers than this. But what this does is it says that the telescope can't go below 30 degrees all the way around the horizon from 0 to 360 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and save that file and then we are going to read it in here by clicking read file. Obstructed horizon created successfully and I close. Now it's automatically enabled that horizon. We can turn it off anytime if we don't want it on. If we want to replace it, we click Create again and just enter a new horizon. So we're done, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. It's automatically selected our new location and it's recalculated the list. Notice here on the night bar, this is the altitude of the sun. And notice that the color changes. The color changes because it went below the obstructed horizon that we just created at an altitude of 30 degrees. Same thing happened with the moon. Same thing happens with any selected object. Okay. So the obstructed horizon is definitely working. 
One thing to look out for is look at the dark period of the night. It should be near midnight. It shouldn't be clear over here. Let's go back and see what happens if we make a mistake. I'm going to change the, the time zone to plus seven instead of minus seven. It's going to put it in the wrong part of the world. And notice what's happened to our night bar. Midnight is daytime. That's definitely wrong. The sun should not be up in the middle of the night. I'm going to go back to our location and I'm going to set this properly back to Mountain Standard Time. One mistake people make is they reverse longitude and latitude or you could have entered your longitude incorrectly. Maybe you put in a, a minus sign or you meant to or you put in east longitude when you meant a west longitude. It's pretty easy to catch that because the, the dark period of the night won't center on midnight. Now notice here it's offset. Dark period of the night is centered right around 1 a.m. Well, that's because it's the summer and we're on summertime or daylight saving time. So that's how you enter an observing location in SkyTools for visual and SkyTools for imaging. They work the same way. Thanks for watching.